Greetings everyone, Freely here with you, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week. Today's build will be using the template of an already popular build that many players, both old and new, use for generally any activity. And that build in names involves the use of Hollow Fireheart and High Discipline. But instead of us just going with the basic stuff, we're going to expand on the already great synergy it provides and create a grenade spewing firewall build with extra heat for sights. What we will create by the end of the video is a build that will not only have a high and great grenade and base ability regeneration, but also utilise the new Seasonal Dawn Firepower mods for even faster grenade regen, and also the new but incredibly sexy Marty's Retribution Grenade Launcher for even more firewalls. This is going to be some hot stuff to handle, and on top of that, I'm going to show you another way to proc sunspots with Marty Retribution with one simple trick. So let's start things off with the subclass which will be the Code of the Siegebreaker, where we can make use of Soul Invictus and Soul Warrior. Soul Invictus provides a boost to health, grenade and melee regen while Soul Warrior is literally the same thing, but further increases the regen speed for all your abilities on top, so they can both stack wonderfully. Now of course you do have the super as well which stacks in duration while standing in sunspots, However, it's not going to be any use to us as we won't be using it while having Holofire Furnace equipped it, which requires us to not use a super at all. This is why both Soul Invictus and Soul Warrior will be the main focus point of the subclass, as we're both stacked for ability regen, and on top of the Holofire regen, you can throw grenades within seconds of each other. And also, Code of the Fireforge and Devastator don't offer the regen or buffs required for the build to make it absolutely a madhouse. Although, Code of the Devastator with Raw and Flames can be pretty useful for allowing your ability to kill tougher adds, but you're gonna lose out on faster regen speed with Code of the Siegebreaker. Now for your grenades, it's pretty simple, Thermite Grenades and Thermite Grenades only, as they are great for their duration, damage and can lock down areas easily. Also because the whole point of the build is to create firewalls wherever you go, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to pick something like, I don't know, Fusion Grenades instead. Not today, but another day we'll look into fusion grenades. For the weapons, you're going to need to have Marty's Retribution, that is both masterwork and has demolitionist built into it, and a heavy grenade launcher of your choice, preferably one with fill prep or ambitious assassin, or just one of the two. With the new Marty's Retribution in hand, we can create mini but limited firewalls of our own making, while our grenade ability recharges, and are quite effective when up against Alakites, Dregs, Vandal, Shanks, anything. Anything that can be easily one or two tapped with any weapon. As well with the required goal in mind, they do cover quite a bit of ground as well, allowing you to take out groups of low level adds that are button stopping one shot, so it's both effective and lethal on ground. On top of that, it can also roll with Demolitioners, which is another fantastic weapon perk to have for grenade focused builds. And that's exactly where we're heading with one when combined with the rest of the build, for more speedier process for our grenades. There is of course another part that's actually quite new and can be useful for certain endgame content called Lead from Gold, which basically allows you to get special ammo upon heavy ammo you collect, which sounds lackluster for most as in PvE, special ammo is going to be plentiful in, well, in some content. And PvP is not really worth investing in, but if you're using a weapon with not a lot of ammo and reserves and requires concentrated aim, so snipers and grenade launchers, then this would be an almost perfect perk choice to pick. At the same time, there's also a lot of tinkering around on your end to make the perk work in your favour, so for now, stick with Demolitionist, and maybe at another date we'll look into this perk a bit more and see where we can effectively make it more better. For your primary, I recommend an up close and personal weapon that can be easily stored, but still hit quite a punch to it, so a sidearm such as breach light or an SMG such as Atlanta D, or even the cold front SMG which is a perfect tool for your arsenal. If none of these sound attractive to you, then perhaps you can just go with a weapon that best fits your own playstyle, as your primary slot is really down to you. For stats, we've got both recovery and resilience at 41, which ideally for most builds, you want to have 50 to 60 to ideally survive certain content or even PvP. In this case here, I had a badly rolled arm pieces, so I couldn't do anything more from there. And if you land in the same spot as I do, then all you need to do is just play it safe. Next, our discipline stat is at 62, so we can further increase our grenade regen on top of our exotic piece, mods, and also demolitions perk. 
Although we do have other abilities in play, including the constant sunspots will provide even more regen than ever before, we have to remember in this time frame that when we start most new missions, we won't have Hallow Fire Heart active to proc our ability regen, as we would need to have full super to do so. When you look at what's left, you only have demolitionists, sunspots and mods, which is still enough, you can still make it work, but not enough to spam fire from my grenades whatever you like. But at the same time, I can see most people complaining saying 62 is still too high, or 62 is not really that needed if you really have these grenade enhancing abilities. So if you feel really adamant that you can basically reduce it down to 50, then by all means reduce it down to 50. And then whatever's left over, you can then go ahead and invest it. Basically what I'm trying to say is play around with this stat here, because like I said, everything here is going to give you fast grenade regen anyways. So 62 does sound a bit too high, but for most people, 62 might sound quite reasonable. So play around with it first, see where it goes, and then basically whatever you have, stick with it. Now left over, we would have mobility, intelligence and strength stat, which are generally what we ID want to stay at. We don't need to focus any more points in these areas, as these areas don't need anything to enhance it any further. For armor, you will need the exotic Hallowfire Heart chest piece to make the overall magic work, and then you'll need 4 pieces of seasonal dawn arm pieces, with 3 of them being solar pieces and 1 being void. It doesn't matter which armor pieces they have to be, they just need to be 3 of them solar affinity and 1 of them void affinity to make it work in your favour, and to also complete the build. Now the mods for the armor we generally have are the following. Head, Major Resist and Special Ammo Finder x2 mod, Arm, Discipline and Blast Radius mod, Chest, Discipline and Molten Overload mod, Leg, Resilience and Firepower mod, Bond, Innovation, Enhanced Bomber and Firepower mod. Alright, now that we covered what needs to be shown, what can this bad boyish build even do? To give you a simple scenario, once we get our super meter fully charged, a Hallow Fire Heart Exotic will kick in, which will increase our ability regen by a lot. Once active, we can then start with using our Blast Radius mod to get charged by light times 2, which will then also trigger the Firepower mod, which will overall give us back 30% grenade energy upon throwing our grenades. So with times 2 Firepower mod, we can get back 30% grenade energy each time we throw our standard grenades, which is going to work well in our favour. Basically, we've cut down our grenade cooldown rate even more by having these two mods. But hang on, we're not done just of yet. With all of these combined, we also have the Marty's Retribution Grenade Launcher to provide even more firepower with its Stylus Thermite Grenade rounds, and also its Demolitionist perk on top of our current regen abilities. Now add on Enhanced Bomber and Solar Sunspots, and you've gone from a Furnace to a Fire Demon from Hell. But wait, there's even more! From testing I found that if you have Soul Invictus and Soul Warrior active, you can also create a Sunspot via Marty's Retribution which kind of brings me back to the Polarius Lance perk, the Perfect Fifth, which if you landed delayed solar charge on an enemy and basically let it kill them, you can also create a sunspot and reap the rewards. This now is something I didn't expect to work at first, as it never did this while I was playing in most of my missions, but I did notice some enemies I killed trigger sunspots when I didn't use any of my abilities. I'm not sure exactly as to how or why it triggers on the subclass tree perk, but if I had to guess, it probably has something to do with how they coded the thermite grenades as a whole into the weapon as a separate entity, when generally being fired upon. But I guess part of the code from the Titan's thermite nade most likely keeps the Titan thermite ability from the bottom tree subclass, and basically overall it somehow activates, and it just at the moment it needs something to trigger it. So it seems like you have to have Soul Invictus and Soul Warrior active and then shoot it at the enemy so the Thermite Waves kills them and triggers it. That's basically what it is in short. You can't shoot the nade at the enemy directly to proc this, it has to be a kill via the grenade Thermite Wave. And to be honest, you may not get it straight away. Like I showed in the video, I had to mess around with it, see exactly what made it tick, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you all know what this means, right? With extra sunspots available, means extra damage to those who run near it, which also means we can create sunspots in areas that a boss with a lot of adds may appear, which overall means more DPS. Plus, with the weapon damage increase from solar sunspots, means even more DPS coming from just Hugo alone. You have now become a god. Great, isn't it? 
This build overall will be helpful in content where lots of low to mid health adds will be in bulk. For example, strikes, nightfalls, raids, gambits, story misses, menagerie, sundial, etc. All of these content will in some degree have a section to where you have to face a large group of adds, who can be quickly dispatched from a simple grenade or two. So where you take this build is down to you. But honestly, with the amount of grenades you'll now be able to spam fire, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a hell of a good time with it. Originally, I wanted this build to be more of a new light user friendly set for those who may have the pieces but haven't got to end game just of yet, something to tie them over till then, which in the end, I think we've definitely achieved that goal either way, as even if you don't have all the necessary pieces, you can still do work with just the exotic and the grenade launcher in place, plus the subclass tree of course. And for the veteran players, I've just given you a build that you can use for most endgame content if you wish, or better off, something to use when solo modifiers are active. Now for the downsides, I've noticed some restrictions with the build, which will vary between everyone, but one common one is ammo for your multi distribution. Now within the build, you will be using the grenade launchers a lot to proc sunspots, charge by light, and firepower mod, and you get around 20 overall in max ammo. But as you will be using it a lot, you will burn through this quickly. And for content that may have, say, the famine modifier, then even more quicker. Even in content where loads of enemies are freely available, it still doesn't mean you'll get special ammo all the time, which can be pretty annoying if you're knee deep in action. So to count on this, I have added a times two special ammo scavenger mod via my helmet, so that I can proc the chance of getting special ammo more easily and less likely to run out against the majority of fights. Although, it's still going to happen from time to time. And secondly, personal defense, which is more aimed at my current version compared to others, and will vary between everyone. As both my resilience and recovery are only in their 40 ranges, this doesn't mean I can't take on most endgame bosses without being shredded into pieces. This doesn't outright mean I can't take them on, I can still do the 950 Nightfalls quite easily for example, it just means I need to take it more easier than usual, and to be more safer rather than being reckless. But there we go, we have now gone through the whole grenade spear and build with its pros and cons, and you can now take what you learn and spread fire to everywhere you touch. Do play around the build in the recommended content to see how it works out for you, and any issues or problems you do come across, do leave a comment on the video and I'll help you out where I can. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, a link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.